The Southern Pacific reporting mark SP or SP from the railroad initials SP was an American Class I railroad network that existed from 1865 to 1998 that operated in the western United States. The system was operated by various companies under the names Southern Pacific Railroad, Southern Pacific Company and Southern Pacific Transportation Company. The original Southern Pacific began in 1865 as a land-holding company. The last incarnation of the Southern Pacific, the Southern Pacific Transportation Company, was founded in 1969 and assumed control of the Southern Pacific system. The Southern Pacific Transportation Company was acquired by the Union Pacific Corporation and merged with their Union Pacific Railroad. The Southern Pacific Transportation Company was the surviving railroad as it absorbed the Union Pacific Railroad and changed its name to Union Pacific Railroad. The Southern Pacific Transportation Company is now the current incarnation of the Union Pacific Railroad. The Southern Pacific Legacy founded hospitals in San Francisco, Tucson, Arizona, and elsewhere. In the 1970s, it also founded a telecommunications network with a state-of-the-art microwave and fiber optic backbone. This telecommunications network became part of Sprint, a company whose name came from the acronym for Southern Pacific Railroad Internal Networking Telephony. Topic history The original Southern Pacific, Southern Pacific Railroad, was founded as a land-holding company in 1865, later acquiring the Central Pacific Railroad through leasing. By 1900, the Southern Pacific system was a major railroad system incorporating many smaller companies, such as the Texas and New Orleans Railroad and Morgan's Louisiana and Texas Railroad. It extended from New Orleans through Texas to El Paso, Texas, across New Mexico and through Tucson, to Los Angeles, through most of California, including San Francisco and Sacramento. Central Pacific lines extended east across Nevada to Ogden, Utah, and reached north through Oregon to Portland. Other subsidiaries eventually included the St. Louis Southwestern Railway Cotton Belt, the Northwestern Pacific Railroad at 328 miles 528 kilometers, the 1,331-mile 2 kilometers Southern Pacific Railroad of Mexico, and a variety of 3 feet 914 millimeters narrow gauge routes. The SP was the defendant in the landmark 1886 United States Supreme Court case Santa Clara County v. Southern Pacific Railroad, which is often interpreted as having established certain corporate rights under the Constitution of the United States. The Southern Pacific Railroad was replaced by the Southern Pacific Company and assumed the railroad operations of the Southern Pacific Railroad. In 1929, Southern Pacific, Texas and New Orleans operated 13,848 route miles not including Cotton Belt, whose purchase of the Golden State Route circa 1980 nearly doubled its size to 3,085 miles 4,965 bringing total SP, SSW mileage to around 13,508 miles 21,739 kilometers. In 1969, the Southern Pacific Transportation Company was established and took over the Southern Pacific Company. This Southern Pacific Railroad is the last incarnation and was at times called Southern Pacific Industries, though Southern Pacific Industries is not the official name of the company. By the 1980s, route mileage had dropped to 10,423 miles, 16,774 kilometers, mainly due to the pruning of branch lines. In 1988, the Southern Pacific Transportation Company including its subsidiary, St. Louis Southwestern Railway was taken over by Rio Grande Industries, the parent company that controlled the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. Rio Grande Industries did not merge the Southern Pacific Transportation Company and the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad together, but transferred direct ownership of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad to the Southern Pacific Transportation Company, allowing the combined Rio Grande Industries railroad system to use the Southern Pacific name due to its brand recognition in the railroad industry and with customers of both the Southern Pacific Transportation Company and the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. A long-time Southern Pacific subsidiary, the St. Louis Southwestern Railway was also marketed under the Southern Pacific name. Along with the addition of the SPCSL Corporation route from Chicago to St. Louis, the total length of the DNRGW, SP, SSW system was 15,959 miles 25,684 kilometers. 
Rio Grande Industries was later renamed Southern Pacific Rail Corporation. By 1996, years of financial problems had dropped Southern Pacific's mileage to 13,715 miles the financial problems caused the Southern Pacific Transportation Company to be taken over by the Union Pacific Corporation, the parent Southern Pacific Rail Corporation, formerly Rio Grande Industries, the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad, the St. Louis Southwestern Railway, and the SPCSL Corporation was also taken over by the Union Pacific Corporation. The Union Pacific Corporation merged the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad, the St. Louis Southwestern Railway and the SPCSL Corporation into their Union Pacific Railroad, but did not merge the Southern Pacific Transportation Company into the Union Pacific Railroad. Instead, the Union Pacific Corporation merged the Union Pacific Railroad into the Southern Pacific Transportation Company in 1998. The Southern Pacific Transportation Company became the surviving railroad, and at the same time, the Union Pacific Corporation renamed the Southern Pacific Transportation Company to Union Pacific Railroad. The Southern Pacific Transportation Company became the current incarnation of the Union Pacific Railroad. The former Southern Pacific Transportation Company is still operating as the current incarnation of the Union Pacific Railroad. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Locomotive paint and appearance. Like most railroads, the SP painted most of its steam locomotives black during the 20th century, but after 1945 SP painted the front of the locomotives smokebox silver almost white in appearance, with graphite colored sides, for visibility. As locomotives are being restored, some Pacific Type 4 locomotive boilers show signs of having been painted dark green. The soft cover book, Steam Glory 2. By Kalmbach Publications 2007 has an article, Southern Pacific's Painted Ladies, which shows color photos from the 1940s and 1950s revealing that a number of SPO 6 yard engines, usually assigned to passenger terminals were painted in various combinations with red cab roof and cab doors, pale silver smokeboxes and smokebox fronts, dark green boilers, multi-colored SP heralds on black cab, green cylinder covers and other details pointed out in color. Some other SP steam passenger locomotives may have been so painted, or at least had dark green boilers. The article indicates that these paint jobs lasted years and were not special paint for a single event. Some passenger steam locomotives bore the daylight scheme, named after the trains they hauled, most of which had the word daylight in the train name. This scheme, carried on the tender, was a bright red on the top and bottom thirds, with the center third being a bright orange. The parts were separated with narrow silver-gray bands. Some of the color continued along the locomotive. The most famous, daylight, locomotives were the GS4 steam locomotives. The most famous daylight hauled trains were the Coast Daylight and the Sunset Limited. Well known were the Southern Pacific's unique, cab forward, steam locomotives. These were two eight eight four locomotives set up to run in reverse, with the tender attached to the smokebox end of the locomotive. Southern Pacific had a number of snowsheds in mountain terrain, and locomotive crews nearly asphyxiated from smoke in the cab. After a number of engineers began running their engines in reverse pushing the tender, Southern Pacific asked Baldwin Locomotive Works to produce cab-forward designs. No other North American railroad ordered cab-forward locomotives. Early diesel locomotives were also painted black. Yard switches had diagonal orange stripes on the ends for visibility, earning this scheme the nickname of Tiger Stripe. Road freight units were black with a red band at the bottom of the car body and a silver and orange, winged, nose. Southern Pacific was in a large serif font in lettering gray, a very light gray. Rail fans call this paint scheme Black Widow. An experimental scheme, all over black with a variety of orange end and side sill treatments was called the Halloween scheme. Over 200 locomotives were so painted between March 1957 and mid-1958. Most passenger units were painted originally in the daylight scheme as described above, though some were painted red on top, silver below for the Golden State operated with the Chicago, Rock Island and Pacific Railroad between Chicago and Los Angeles. Silver cars with a narrow red band at the top were used for the Sunset Limited and other trains into Texas. 
In 1958 SP standardized on a paint scheme of dark gray, lark dark gray, with a red, winged, nose, railfans dubbed this scheme bloody nose. Lettering was again in lettering gray. Anticipating the failed Southern Pacific Santa Fe merger in the mid-1980s, the Kodachrome paint scheme named for the colors of the Kodak boxes that the film came in was applied to many Southern Pacific locomotives. When the Southern Pacific Santa Fe merger was denied by the Interstate Commerce Commission, the Kodachrome units were not immediately repainted, some even lasting up to the Southern Pacific's end as an independent company. The Interstate Commerce Commission's decision left Southern Pacific in a decrepit state. The locomotives were not repainted immediately, although some were repainted into the Bloody Nose scheme as they were overhauled after months to years of deferred maintenance. After the 1988 purchase of the Southern Pacific Transportation Company by Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad's parent company, Rio Grande Industries whose owner was Philip Anschutz, the side lettering on repainted locomotives was changed from SP's serif font to the Rio Grande's speed lettering style. The Rio Grande did not retain its identity, as Anschutz felt the Southern Pacific name was the more recognizable. A variation of the daylight scheme, also known as popsicles, designed by Chester Mack, was applied to SP's Forte 70s, U25Bs repowered with Solzer diesel engines. Some former SP locomotives largely retained their original bloody nose livery, amended with yellow patches and new numbers, following the takeover by Union Pacific. Southern Pacific Road Switcher diesels often had elaborate lighting clusters front and rear, with a large red Mars light for emergency signaling, and often two pairs of sealed beam headlamps, one on top of the cab and the other below the Mars light on the nose. Starting in the 1970s SP had cab air conditioning on all new locomotives and the unit is visible on the cab roof. Southern Pacific placed large snowplows on the pilots of their road switches for the heavy snowfall on Donner Pass. Many Southern Pacific road switches had a Nathan Airchime model P3 or P5 air horn with cords distinct to Southern Pacific locomotives in the western states. The Southern Pacific and Cotton Belt were the only buyers of the EMD SD45T2 tunnel motor locomotive. This locomotive was necessary because the standard configuration EMD SD45 could not get a sufficient amount of cool air into the diesel locomotive's radiator while working Southern Pacifics through snow sheds and tunnels in the Cascades and Donner Pass. These tunnel motors were EMD SD45-2s with radiator air intakes at the locomotive car body's walkway level, rather than EMD's typical setup with fans on the locomotive's long hood roof pulling air through radiators at the top, side of the locomotive's body. Inside tunnels and snow sheds hot exhaust from lead units would accumulate near the top of the tunnel or snow shed and be drawn into the radiators of trailing EMD motor locomotives, leading these locomotives to shut down as their diesel prime mover overheated. The Southern Pacific also operated EMD SD40T-2s, as did the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. Southern Pacific was known for L-shaped engineers' windshields. Introduced by EMD on SD45 Demonstrator 4353, this design improves visibility by emitting the pillar which in conventional design splits the engineer's windshield into two panes. Southern Pacific selected this option on new EMD locomotive orders starting in 1967 through the early 1980s, one of the few railroads to do so Illinois Central was another buyer of this option, and ordered a similar windshield design from General Electric. After the wide nose design became popular most of southern pacific's locomotives kept their l-shaped windshields before being rebuilt or sold to different private railroads after its merger unlike other railroads whose locomotive number boards bore the locomotive number sp used them for the train number until 1967 SP's San Francisco San Jose commute trains continued displaying train numbers for the convenience of passengers. The other railroad that used locomotive number boards for train numbers into the 1960s was SP's transcontinental partner, Union Pacific. On either side of the boiler near the smokestack or further back, indicators are displayed. These are train numbers, figure 1. All trains going toward San Francisco are called westward and are odd numbered such as 1, 3, and so on. A train going away from SF are called eastward and are even numbered. The example in Figure 1 shows 99 as the train number, which is the number of the streamlined daylight, northbound. 
In order to carry all the people wishing to ride on the same train, sometimes it was necessary to operate the train in two or more separate parts, which are called sections. When a train is operated in sections, the first section carries a 1 preceding the train number figure 2, the second section carries a 2, etc., and the last section carries the train number only. Special trains or extras carry the locomotive number preceded by an X figure 3. In 2006, the Union Pacific Railroad unveiled UP 1996, the sixth and final of its Heritage Series EMDSD 70 Ace locomotives. Its paint scheme appears to be based on the Daylight and Black Widow schemes. Today there are still locomotives in SP paint, including 10 AC 4400 CWs with original SP numbers as of January 2013. Topic. Passenger train service Until May 1, 1971, when Amtrak took over long-distance passenger operations in the United States, the Southern Pacific at various times operated the following named passenger trains. Trains with names in italicized bold text still operate under Amtrak 49er Apache operated jointly with the Rock Island Railroad 1926 to 1938. Argonaut Arizona Limited operated jointly with the Rock Island Railroad. Beaver Californian Cascade operates today as part of the Coast Starlight train. City of San Francisco operated jointly with the Chicago and Northwestern Railway and the Union Pacific Railroad. SP portion operates today as part of Amtrak's California Zephyr. Coast Daylight operates today as part of the Coast Starlight train. Coast Mail. Coaster. Del Monte. Fast Mail Overland Mail. Golden Rocket proposed was to have been operated jointly with the Chicago, Rock Island and Pacific Railroad. Golden State operated jointly with the Chicago, Rock Island and Pacific Railroad. Grand Canyon Hustler Imperial operated jointly with the Rock Island Railroad 1946 to 1967. Klamath Lark Oregonian Overland Al Pacific Limited Peninsula Commute operated until 1985, now Caltrain Rogue River Sacramento Daylight San Francisco Challenger operated jointly with the Chicago and Northwestern Railway and the Union Pacific Railroad San Joaquin Daylight Senator Shasta Daylight Shasta Express Shasta Limited Shasta Limited Deluxe Starlight Sunbeam Sunset Limited Suntan Special Tearchappie West Coast El Costeno operated from 1927 till 1949 as an international train under the subsidiary Southern Pacific Railroad of Mexico between Tucson, Arizona and Guadalajara in Mexico featuring through sleepers from Los Angeles, California to Mexico City in Mexico. El Yaqui operated from 1927 till 1951 as an international train under the subsidiary Southern Pacific Railroad of Mexico between Tucson, Arizona and Guadalajara in Mexico. Locomotives used for passenger service Steam locomotives 280 Consolidation 282 Mercado 442 Atlantic 462 Pacific CSP 2472 482 Mountain CSP MT5 484 Golden State General Service CSP 4449 288 4 488 2 cab forward articulated mallet diesel locomotives Alco PA EMCE2 EMDE7 EMDE 8, EMDE 9, CSP 6051, EMDFP 7, GEU 25B, FMH 2466, Train Master, EMDGP 7, SSW only, EMDGP 9, CSP 5623, EMDSD 7, 
EMD SD9 CSP 4450 GEP 30 CH, leased from Amtrak EMD SDP 45 EMD GP 40 P2 Topic: Notable accidents. John Sontag, a young Southern Pacific employee, was injured c. 1888 while coupling cars in the railroad yard in Fresno. He accused the company of not providing him with medical care while he was recuperating from his on-the-job injury and then not rehiring him when he had healed. He soon turned to a life of crime, mostly train robberies, and died of gunshot wounds and tetanus in the Fresno jail in 1893 aged 32 years. Sontag's partner in crime, Chris Evans also hated the Southern Pacific, which Evans accused of forcing farmers to sell their lands at reduced rates to the company. On the 28th of March 1907, the Southern Pacific Sunset Express, descending the grade out of the San Timoteo Canyon, entered the Colton Rail Yard traveling about 60 miles per hour, hit an open switch and careened off the track, resulting in 24 fatalities. Accounts said nine of the train's 14 cars disintegrated as they piled on top of one another, leaving the dead and injured in a heap of kindling and crumpled metal. Of the dead, 18 were Italian immigrants traveling to jobs in San Francisco from Genoa, Italy. The Coast Line Limited was heading for Los Angeles, California, on the 22nd of May 1907, when it was derailed just west of Glendale, California. Passenger cars reportedly tumbled down the embankment. At least two people were killed and others injured. The horrible deed was planned with devilish accurateness. The Pasadena Star News reported at the time. It said spikes were removed from the track and a hook placed under the end of the rail. The Star's coverage was extensive and its editorial blasted the criminal elements behind the wreck. The man or men who committed this horrible deed near Glendale may not be anarchists, technically speaking. But if they are sane men, moved by motive, they are such stuff as anarchists are made of. If the typical anarchist conceived that a railroad corporation should be terrorized, he would not scruple to wreck a passenger train and send scores and hundreds to instant death. In the early hours of 1 June 1907, an attempt to derail a Southern Pacific train near Santa Clara, California, was foiled when a pile of railway ties was discovered on the tracks. A work train crew found that someone had driven a steel plate into a switch near Burbank, California, intending to derail the Santa Barbara local. On 12 August 1939, the westbound city of San Francisco derailed from a bridge in Palisade Canyon, between Battle Mountain and Carlin in the Nevada desert. Among the passengers and crew members 24 people were killed and many more injured, and five cars were destroyed. An act of sabotage was determined to be the most likely cause, however, no suspects was were ever identified. On New Year's Eve 1944, a rear end collision west of Ogden in thick fog killed 48 people. On 17 January 1947, the Southern Pacific Night Flyer wrecked 12 miles outside of Bakersfield, seven people were killed and over 50 injured. Four coaches and a tourist sleeper were overturned, landing far off the tracks, the other seven cars remained upright. The locomotive stayed on the tracks and its crew was uninjured. A 29-year-old passenger, Robert Crowley from Miami, Florida, had been conversing with a man across the aisle who was killed instantly. Crowley was a combat war veteran, said, I never saw such a mess, even on a battlefield. On 12 May 1989, a Southern Pacific train carrying fertilizer derailed in San Bernardino, California. The train failed to slow while descending a nearby slope, and sped up to about 110 miles per hour before derailing, causing the San Bernardino train disaster. The crash destroyed seven homes along Duffy Street and killed two train workers and two residents. Thirteen days later on 25 May 1989, an underground pipeline running along the right-of-way ruptured and caught fire due to damage done to the pipeline during cleanup from the derailment, destroying 11 more homes and killing two more people. On the night of 14 July 1991, a Southern Pacific train derailed into the upper Sacramento River at a sharp bend of track called the Cantara Loop, upstream from Dunsmuir, California, in Siskiyou County. Several cars made contact with the water, including a tank car. Early in the morning of 15 July, it became apparent that the tank car had ruptured and spilled its entire contents into the river, approximately 19,000 gallons of metamsodium, a soil fumigant. Ultimately, over a million fish, and tens of thousands of amphibians and crayfish were killed. 
Millions of aquatic invertebrates, including insects and mollusks, which form the basis of the river's ecosystem, were destroyed. Hundreds of thousands of willows, alders, and cottonwoods eventually died, many more were severely injured. The chemical plume left a 41 mile wake of destruction from the spill site to the entry point of the river into Shasta Lake. The accident still ranks as the largest hazardous chemical spill in California history. At the time of the incident, metam sodium was not classified as a hazardous material. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Preserved locomotives. There are many Southern Pacific locomotives still in revenue service with railroads such as the Union Pacific Railroad, and many older and special locomotives have been donated to parks and museums or continue operating on scenic or tourist railroads. Most of the engines now in use with Union Pacific have been patched, where the SP logo on the front is replaced by a Union Pacific shield, and new numbers are applied over the old numbers with a Union Pacific sticker. However, some engines remain in Southern Pacific bloody nose paint. Over the past couple years, most of the patched units were repainted into the full Union Pacific scheme, and as of January 2019, less than 10 units remain in their old paint. Among the more notable equipment is Southern Pacific 3100, SP 3100, former SP 6800 Bicentennial U25B owned and operated by the Orange Empire Railway Museum, Paris, CA 4294 AC 12 4882, located at the California State Railroad Museum, Sacramento, California. 4449 GS4 484 formerly located at the Brooklyn Roundhouse before being relocated to the Oregon Rail Heritage Center in June 2012 Portland Oregon 2479 P10 462 owned and being restored by the California Trolley and Railroad Corporation San Jose California 2472 P8462 owned and operated by the Golden Gate Railroad Museum Redwood City California 2467 P8462 on loan by the Pacific Locomotive Association Fremont California to the California State Railroad Museum 3420 C192 80 owned by El Paso Historic Board stored at Phelps Dodge Copper Refinery El Paso Texas 745 MK5 282 owned by the Louisiana Rail Heritage Trust operated by the Louisiana Steam Train Association and based in Jefferson near New Orleans Louisiana 4460 GS6 484 located at the Museum of Transportation Kirkwood Missouri 1518 EMDSD7 former EMD demonstrator 990 and first SD7 built located at the Illinois Railway Museum Union Illinois 4450 EMDSD9 located at the Western Pacific Railroad Museum Portola California former commute train engine scrapped in 2013 794 MK5282 the last Mercado built for the Texas and New Orleans Railroad in 1916 out of spare parts in their Houston shops it currently resides with Cosmetic Restoration at San Antonio Station, San Antonio, Texas, but plans are to restore it to operating condition. For a complete list, see List of Preserved Southern Pacific Railroad Rolling Stock. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Company Offices. Topic: <laughs> Presidents in Southern Pacific history Timothy Guy Phelps (1865–1868), Charles Crocker (1868–1885), Leland Stanford (1885–1890), Collis P. Huntington (1890–1900), Charles Melville Hayes (1900–1901). E. H. Harriman, 1901 to 1909; Robert S. Lovett, 1909 to 1911; William Sproul, 1911 to 1918; Julius Crutchnett, 1918 to 1920; William Sproul, 1920 to 1928. Why? 
Paul Shoup, 1929 to 1932. Angus Daniel Macdonald, 1932 to 1941. Armand Mercier, 1941 to 1951. Donald J. Russell, 1952 to 1964. Benjamin F. Biagini, 1964 to 1976. Denman McNear, 1976 to 1979. Alan Firth, 1979 to 1982. Robert Krebs, 1982 to 1988. D.M. Mike Mohan, 1988 to 1993. Edward L. Moyers, 1993 to 1995. Jerry R. Davis, 1995–1996. Topic. Chairman of each executive committee in Southern Pacific history. Leland Stanford, 1890–1893. Vacant, 1893–1909. Robert S. Lovett, 1909–1913. Julius Kruchnet, 1913–1925. Henry D. Forrest, 1925–1928. Hale Holden, 1928 to 1932. Topic: Chairman of each board of directors in Southern Pacific history. Henry D. Forrest, 1929 to 1932. Hale Holden, 1932 to 1939. Position non-existent, 1939 to 1964. Donald J. Russell, 1964 to 1972. Benjamin F. Biagini, 1976 to 1982. Denman K. McNear, 1982 to 1988. Edward L. Moyers, 1993 to 1995, Chairman, CEO. Topic: Notable employees. Carl Ingold Jacobson, Los Angeles, California, City Council Member, 1925–33 W. Birch Lee, employee in New Orleans office, along with his father, John Martin Lee, Jr. Before serving in the Louisiana House of Representatives Charles Wright, land surveyor for the railway, before becoming a botanist See also History of rail transportation in California El Paso and Southwestern Railroad Long Wharf Santa Monica Pacific Fruit Express Santa Fe Southern Pacific Merger Southern Pacific Depot Street Louis Southwestern Railway Texas and New Orleans Railroad